I'm becoming more clean as time goes. <laughs> I haven't become completely clean yet, but I used to say a lot nastier stuff. That's what I think I still say when you kiss somebody, is that right? I still say that. So I haven't got rid of that. Uh, Larry, you know, anytime you kiss somebody, <coughs> kissing. Oh, you want to say, no, I'm here, I have not heard that. Don't kiss anybody. I never heard it. I never heard it. I said it. I said it. I said it. I said it. Bugs, bugs are not uh, going to inherit the earth. Uh, they own it. They really, 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 we are the landlord, honestly. Uh, so we might as well make peace with them, and they are the landlord. And that's uh, Thomas Eisner. You can look him up online. He he wrote uh, several books just recently, I think, four or five years ago. One of them came out. Uh, Thomas Eisner. He's very famous with arthropods. You've done a lot of it. Final arthropoda. Um, arthron, it means joint and part, as you know. It means uh, foot part. Uh, maybe, uh, it, maybe they are polyphyletic. Maybe they came from different phylum. Uh, evolved from different phylum. That's possible. About 900,000 species have been discovered so far in arthropods. <coughs> Overall, all of the animal kingdom, all in all together, is about one and a half million. So you can say about a million of the animals on planet Earth belong to arthropods that have been discovered so far. There, there are mathematical models. They're saying there is more, uh, there is more to be discovered. Anyhow, eosilomates, protostome with hemocia segmented. Of course, not. Uh, this segmentation is different than uh, analyte segmentation. Okay, segmentation of analytes was all throughout the animal segment by segment by segment, but these guys are segmented, and they're not repeated segmented. I hope uh, you, you can distinguish a little bit. They have a head, thorax, and abdomen. Sometimes the head and thorax is combined together. It's called cephalothorax. And some animals, like ticks, the whole animal, the whole head, thorax, and abdomen is just one. Okay, I hope I'm making some sense a little bit. But as time goes on, you will, you will see that. Uh, tegmata is a fused body part such as head and thorax, which is called cephalothorax. Uh, and then you will see that term cephalothorax several times. So th that's what the term tegmata means. Uh, uh, you will see another, you will see, uh, it, here we go. Uh, terga is the tergum dorsal place. Do not confuse, I'll put them back to back. Uh, next to each other, so you do not confuse tegmata with tergum. Tergum, if you would, is singular tergum, plural tergum. Dorsal plates, the exoskeletal plates on the dorsal portion of the animals, it's called tergum, singular tergum, plural. We do have, what is the name of this bone in our body? Sternum. Sternum. Okay. In them, plural is called sternum. Okay, sternum singular. So the exoskeleton plates, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, is called uh, sternum, uh, sternum uh, singular and sternum plural. So you have terminology for dorsal in the back of the animal and ventral, which is the sternum uh, portion of the animal, the plates. Cuticle, um, they have epicuticle waxy layer on, on, sur on the very surface of the, it's a, a little bit of wax on the surface of the animal. And then chitin found in endocuticle and exocuticle. Chitin, again, you all know what chitin is. Uh, I did draw it for you. It's a sugar molecule that have nitrogen. You already know that uh, from your other classes. Uh, chitin rods surrounded by protein molecule uh, and then uh, there are ex, um, exocuticle become sclerotized, become tanning, become dark colored, and epidermis underneath, which makes these layers on top. Now, when the animal shed the molt, uh, ecdysis, ecdysis, all of those terminologies mean the same thing. When they shed their exoskeleton, they are releasing the enzyme, an enzyme, two enzymes, which you mentioned, uh, protease and chitinase. Where is the other one? Chitinase. So when they release those enzymes, the exoskeleton is being shed. And then they grow it back again. Okay. Um, uh, pores, they have openings in the exoskeleton for respiration purposes. 
and they have CTA, little hair like, you saw CTA in uh, annelids, the hair like, in these animals uh, is not for locomotion, in these animals is for sensory, like spiders. They have a lot of CTA on the surface of the body, so they can uh, detect the, locomo uh, the motion of the web or the air current. When the air current, how come, why is it tough to kill a fly? when he's sitting down because they can feel the air current and they start moving, flying away by the citate. Okay, It's not because they have eyes. Of course, their eyes can form image. In these animals, you will see, uh, they have eyes that can form image. But it's because of the citate, they can detect air current. And in, uh, a spider, as I said, not only they can detect air current, they also can detect the movement of the web. So they know there is an animal trap in the web they go toward the animal and eat it. Uh, spiders do not have uh, compound eye, we'll talk about that they can form image. They have simple eye, they can detect light intensity. Spiders do not have compound eye. Okay, molting or ectasis, I talked about that. There are two protein, I hope. Uh, yes, it's here. Okay, protease and chitinase, uh, epidermis secretes them. Open circulatory system, we already talked about that. So they have sinuses, they do not have capillaries. Um, largest arthropod, Japanese crab, uh, macrocaria, about four meter uh, from one toe, from one leg to the other leg. Uh, I'll show you some pictures. Smallest one, the, par uh, the parasitic mite demodex, which is found in almost all of us. Not almost, there was one study, everybody had it in their eyebrow or their eyelashes. And I had a student in the past took his eyelashes out, his eyebrows, I want to see them immediately. I said, no, they're deep in the hair follicle. So you cannot see them. We have to cut your eyebrow completely or your eyelashes. So put it on the microscope, then you will see it. What they say? Oh my God, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anything for science, huh? <laughs> okay, so Demodex is, uh, Demodex in dogs and cats, I, I will mention this a little bit, it is devastating. I don't know, have you seen, uh, if you take your dog or cat to the veterinarian and uh, God forbid, say your dog or cat has demodex, um, it's not, they, they, I've seen some pictures, the dog or cat, they itch their skin so much that they, they dug a hole. You can go online, Google picture images, and you can see demodex uh, pictures in dogs and cats. You, know, you see a hole in their body because they, they scratch them, they scratch themselves so much. But in us, no problem. We still consider it as a parasite, um, but we all have, we all have. Only invertebrate that can fly. Other, we studied invertebrate all semester long, and none of them fly except arthropods. And not all of arthropods fly, not all of them, some of them. Here is a uh, Japanese crab that I said. Uh, in the background, there are some people in here. So it's a very from one end to one end. It's about four meter long. Here we go. Some people back there. And uh, these are uh, Japanese. OK, here is a chitin that I was talking about a little bit. And these are, this is a cross section of, this is a longitudinal cut of the, um, of the exoskeleton, but this is a cross section. Here the chitin is rod and protein is around them. These are all uh, protein molecules. The layers, uh, as I said, there are setae in here, poral canals, there are little pores, uh, epicuticle, the waxy layer on top, exocuticle, pigmented layers, endocuticle, and epidermis on the bottom layer right here, which uh, secretes the um, um, the, exo, the uh, exoskeleton. Uh, I was reading this. Uh, spin like inwards projections. Oh, I'm talking about uh, echo, uh, uh, epiderm. Uh, that uh, spin like inward projections of cuticle that muscles inserts in them. Uh, it's just a place for muscle attachment, I think. Uh, we did, I did talk about that a little bit. Okay. They have, uh, these guys, these animals have two types of eyes. You have not seen them before. Uh, well, you've seen uh, the eyes that can form image in uh, what, what group of animals you've seen that eyes form image? <coughs> Mollusks, the uh, cephalopoda. These guys, they have two types of eyes. They have simple eyes and they have compound eyes. Simple eyes, it detects the light intensity, which we did talk about it all, all semester long. 
compound ions, on the other hand, forms image. The compound I is made up of a materium, a structure called a materium, which is uh, retinal images form. Uh, this is a picture of a compound eye. This is not a simple eye image. This is a compound eye. And they are made up of a materium. In a materium, you have uh, cornea, crystalline cones, pigmented microvilli, and they send the image into their nervous system, the brain. And here we go, omatidium. I was looking for this term, omatidium. Simple eye, which is not in this diagram, uh, it's called acellus singular, acelli plural. Uh, it's monitor by intensity, and uh, that's the main difference. I do not have a picture of, uh, you know, breakdown picture of simple eye. Uh, similarities with analytes, uh, segmentation of body surface and muscles, nervous system. The nervous system, most of the animals we studied so far, all of, uh, all the way from uh, flatworms, all the way from flatworms and on, all of the animals we study, they have a ladder-like nervous system. And then when we are done with this material, we start studying for the final exam, you will see that's not true for the animals, with the uh, vertebrate animals. That's not true for vertebrate animals. In all of the animals, all the way from flatworms and on that we study, they have two nerve cords, and the two nerve cords are, they call it the ladder. Like it looks like a ladder. They are attached together by transfer nerves and lateral nerves, some of them have. That's what these guys have. That's what annelids have. Okay, arthropods have the same type of nervous system. And imagine this is the head, for example, the head. So there could be accumulation of a lot of neuron here, and then there is less toward the posterior portion of the animal. This is the tail of the animal, the posterior portion of the animal. Okay, so that's what the, that's what they say when they say nervous system. The similarities of nervous system on annelids and arthropods is ladder, like a ladder you climb up. Okay, that's what it is. It's a ladder like. Okay, spiral cleavage we talked about at the beginning of semester. Uh, differences with annelids, uh, they have fixed number of segments. Um, and they have no septa. Um, when I said uh, the segmentation between uh, the head and thorax, there is no uh, uh, septa. Uh, Analysts had it. Silomic cavity is reduced. Uh, in annelids, you had coelom uh, all the way from the beginning of the animal to the end of the animal. Okay, but these guys is around the heart, gonads. Open circulatory system, annelids had closed circulatory system. <coughs> special uh, uh, structures for respiration. Annelids really did not have special structures for respiration. The respiration was occurring through their uh, tegument, through their epidermis. These guys have either gills, lungs, so on and so forth. Uh, jointed appendages, yes. Exoskeleton, these guys have compound eyes. Uh, uh, Annelids did not have compound eye, they had simple eyes, uh, like nervous fairness. Uh, it could detect light intensity. Uh, but, okay, no cilia, these guys have no cilia. Okay, the first phy uh, phylum onychophora is something between, as you mentioned, and between arthropods and annelids, uh, velvet worm or walking worm, worm like with head and antenna. Okay, and uh, they have cuticle. They do not have exoskeleton. They are segmented uh, like annelids, and they have simple eyes. They do not have compound eyes. And ventral mouth part, the mouth part in these animals, that's why they are something between uh, arthropods and annelids. They have the mouth part called mandible. Mandible, you do have sort of grasshopper mouth part, which you should be able to look at it and identify what is a mandible. Man, not all arthropods have mandible. Um, some of them have them. We will we'll learn, we will talk about them, which one have mandible. So these guys, they have mouth part, which arthropods, some arthropods have called mandible. Annelids didn't have mouth part. That they called mandible or chelicerae or pedipal. They didn't have any of them. Okay. Um, so ventral mouth part, simple eyes, segmentation, uh, some sort. Okay, subphyla of arthropoda. If you are watching 
uh, iTunes, is that right? Did I say it correctly? iTunes, I'm forgetting things. If you're watching iTunes, uh, the old classification was used. So make sure we are going to stick with the new classification. The new edition of textbook will come out. Maybe they have a different classification. But let's stick with this one right here, which is in your PowerPoints on DocuShip. Am I making sense, everybody? Uh, Jose, am I making sense? A little bit. Okay, subfile of Trilobita, the very first one. Um, they're all extinct, but there are there is some um, some students send me some you know, pictures, and I'll share it with you guys. I'll show you guys in deep ocean. Uh, they are found some Trilobita. Chilicerata. They call this Chilicerata because the mouth part, the mouth has a structure called Chilicerate. Okay. And then uh, you will see that uh, crustacean. When you go to the red lobster, you eat crustacean. When you go seafood, most likely you're eating, except uh, mollusks, clam, oyster, you eat. That's mollusks. When you go to red lobster and they bring, bring you clam, oyster, and your friend, oh, you're going to eat some crustacean, say, no, this is a mollusk. Educate people. <laughs> and you go eat. <laughs> right? Huh? Larry? You don't want to educate people? Uh, uh, yeah, yes, I know you do. Okay, hexapoda, we are talking about hexa means what? Right. Six. six. They have six legs. Old names, it was something else. Um, but if during exam or quiz I use the old name, no, that's the wrong answer. Uh, Myropoda, we are talking about centipedes and metapedes. Centipedes and metapedes, now they have their own. Uh, sub phylum. Since this is such a huge phylum, they had to break it down to sub phylum. And then during lab practical exam, I would ask you what sub phylum? What sub phylum? What you should know which sub phylum these organisms, whatever we have in those boxes, belong to. Yes, Blair? So these five sub phyla, do they make up all of the phylum arthropoda? Yes. Arthropoda is the largest phylum we study, yes. These five make up the whole arthropoda. That's it. Everything you look at, you go find one today, it's one of these sub -files. Okay, the first one is, of course, they're saying it's uh, extinct. Uh, Trilobita, three longitudinal lobes, all uh, could be extinct. Uh, primitive marine, um, it could be. I'm using the term could be. If you look at the old, old videos, it says they're all extinct. But now I'm using could be. Um, so uh, three tegmata, uh, cephalon, thorax, and a pygidium. Um, in analytes, what was pygidium? The very last segment in analytes called pygidium. So you will see that. Uh, cephalon, it means head, thorax, right here uh, after uh, your chest area. Longitudinal groups divided into uh, three lobes. That's what they call it, trilobita. Here it is. <coughs> So, based on fossil records, whatever I'm saying is based on fossil, and we do have an example of it in our, uh, in our uh, containers. So we do have a fossil record of Trilobita. Here is the head region, of course, they're saying that Kampampan, Antana, uh, head region, but there are three lobes, these are gills, so there is no leftover of it on uh, fossil records, but here is one lobe, here is another lobe, and here is another lobe. It's black and white. I wish it was not. It was different color. I had to copy it from another place. But there are three lobes. One, two, three. And that's why they call them trilobita. Okay? So in a cross section, if you cut the animal in the cross, of course, the head, thorax, and pygidium. They didn't call it abdomen. They call it thorax and head area, thorax area, and pygidium last thing. If you cut it in a cross section, then the gills, segmented legs, and so on and so forth. Here is one of the lobes in a cross section. Here is the other lobe. They call it plural lobe. Plural lobe. And right in the middle one is called axial lobe. So this one in the middle is axial lobe, and these two are called plural lobe on the side of the animal. <coughs> and of course, these are Parts of the leg you will learn. Don't worry about the coxa and uh, other. Here we go. 
This is this is what one of the students sent me from deep, uh, deep sea, and they are saying that's a trilobito. This look like pygidium uh, head and the three lobes in here, and these are all gills. All of this area look like it. I don't know. I have not researched it very much to see if it is um, uh, legitimate or not. Uh, but anyhow, you can look it up and see if they do exist or not. This is what uh, one student said. Okay, there's not much to say about trilobita. Let's move on to Chilisorata. Okay, there's a lot more to be said about Chilisorata than uh, trilobita. Okay, horseshoe crab, examples that we have in the lab. We have horseshoe crab. Based on the video, they are walking fossils. Is that right? They look like their fossil records. They look like them. Uh, spiders, ticks, mites, scorpions, and sea spiders, which we do not have in the lab. This one we do not have in the lab, uh, but the rest of them we do have in the lab. Chelicerae for seas, it's a mouth part. Chelicerae is a mouth part that sees the prey, sees the food, and appears the food, tear it, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, food partially digested outside, what they do, some of them, not all of them, they release some enzymes on top of their prey, and the prey is digested, then they engulf it, they eat it. Uh, it's just like you go ahead, before you eat your hamburger, you spit on it, and then you eat it. <laughs> we don't do that. Usually it happens inside of our body, that's what these guys do a little bit. Uh, feeding by pedipalp, they have a structure equivalent to our arm. It's called pedipalp, which brings food to the mouth. It's, uh, it's not part of chelicerae, but it's called uh, pedipalp. Uh, it's part of the uh, bringing food to the mouth. Uh, chelicerates do not have antenna, uh, like spiders. Have antenna. Four pairs of walking legs, so they have four walk, uh, walking legs. Six pairs of appendages, do not confuse these. Uh, statements, uh, six pairs of appendages, including a pair of chelicerae, a pair of pedipal. So you have a pair of chelicerae right here, a pair of pedipal, and then four pairs of legs. Are we making some sense? Chelicerae is the mouth part. You can see them on some of the species. Pedipal is bringing food to the mouth, okay? And then you have four <coughs> pairs of legs. And then you, people look at these things, they, they, get, they get confused that they have six pairs of legs. Really, they don't. They don't have six pairs of legs. The horseshoe crab is the best example. You look at horseshoe crab, you will see that they have a chelicerae, a pedipal, and four pairs of legs. And you will see some pictures here in there of horseshoe crab. Four pairs of walking legs um, uh, suck food out uh, uh, of their prey sometimes. Uh, what it is, what that one means, <clears throat> because the prey has exoskeleton also. So what happens, they suck it out of the soft body, the soft portion, all of the muscles and internal organs of their prey, they suck it out. They do not eat the exoskeleton of their prey. That's what that sentence means. Okay, suck them out of the prey. Uh, carapace is a exoskeleton plate on the dorsal portion of the animal. It's a huge, large plate, and it's called carapace. Uh, it's one plate on the dorsal portion of the animal, which is called carapace. Uh, class Merostomata, uh, subclass Xyphoceridia. Um, again, uh, yes, you should know classes. Not only you know the subphylum, you should know the class a little bit. And this is the horseshoe crab, is the name of the genus. Uh, it's a, they run a test that they, in microbiology, they do, use horseshoe crab blood uh, to run a test. Somebody uh, talked about it last semester. Uh, but anyhow, horseshoe crab, Alimilius uh, polyphemus, is the scientific name of horseshoe crab, which we do have in the lab. Carapace, unsegmented, uh, covers the cephalothorax. I did talk about that. Tells them they have a tail uh, on the uh, uh, toward where the anus ends, uh, toward the end of the animal. If the animal is flipped over, they use their tails to flip them uh, on the right side, so uh, the ventral side and bottom. Cephalothorax uh, has four pairs of walking legs, one pair of chelicerae, 
and five pairs of book gills, a little bit, two compound eyes, and two simple eyes. So you see some of the species uh, throughout the whole entire phylum, some species have both compound eye and simple eye. Some species, like spider, has only simple eyes. They do not have compound eyes. Okay? And do I know any species that have compound eyes? I don't. I'm thinking here, most species that we are going to study here, grasshopper, horseshoe crab, they have both compound eye and simple eye. Again, I don't know, fly, they have uh, compound eye and simple eye. Um, I don't know any species that has only compound eyes. Uh, but there are many species that have both. Okay. Uh, nocturnal, you know that term. They are active at night. And uh, tri the larva is a trilobic. They have the larva of the horseshoe crab. It has three lobes, uh, like a trilobic. Sexual maturity at nine years of lifespan, 19 years. The lifespan of these guys, I've seen videos uh, that these guys, the horseshoe crab we have in the lab, they can become this big. I don't know if you guys have seen them or not. They can become huge. Okay, and they live for 19 years, but at age nine, they become mature. Okay, we human uh, females usually at age nine, 10, male, age 12, 11, something like that. Um, but these guys at age nine, uh, I think for animal kingdom, that's a little bit too late, I think. But for us, nine, 10, ah, we, are, we are human, we can do anything we want. Is that, we, we own the earth, is that right? Okay, here is the horseshoe crab. This is, the, this is the view from dorsal, the back of the animal. Okay, and I'll show you a view from ventral portion of the animal. So here is a talisman. If the animal is flipped on this side, okay, they use this to flip, them, flip themselves back to this position that they are. Okay, uh, the, uh, this is called the abdomen. Of course, this is a uh, cephalothorax. Um, and they have spines, I'm looking for simple eye right here, and where is compound eye? Did they mention, did they show compound eye here? Yeah, so right, yeah. Where, oh, right here. Right here, right in front of my eyes. Compound eye, one on that, one on this side, one on that side, and they have accumulation of uh, simple eye uh, in this hand, movable spine. Here is the ventral portion of the animal. Okay, so they have a pair of chelicerae right here, a pair. That's the chelicerate. This is a mandible, okay? And after that, they have four pairs of walking legs. And then, of course, this is a mouth. Uh, again, they have chelera. It's another structure here. Boot gills, five pairs of boot gills. Anus is at the tip of, not the tip, as this end of the animal uh, of the telson. And that's pretty much it. Again, none of these structures, I don't, except the telson, I would like you to know telson for lab practical purposes, but I don't expect you to know uh, chelicerae and uh, pedipalp and walking legs, uh, all of those, don't worry about it. Uh, class uh, Pycnogolia, which is sea spiders, we do not have it in the lab. Um, I'm not worried about it, okay? Let's not worry about it, we do not have it in the lab. There is not much to see. Arachnida. Uh, have you seen the movie Arachnophobia? You can go to YouTube or Netflix or try. It was made in the 1980s, I believe. Long. I don't know. I have not seen it, but it would be interesting to see it on a trip to Monterey or bus. All spiders are carnivores. It means they eat other, uh, other arthropods. Uh, black widow, a uh, brown recluse, spider, and scorpions. I just listed some of the most dangerous ones for you. In the lab, we do not have black widow. Somebody brought me a live one. Um, I should have, well, anyhow. Uh, and brown recluse, uh, I hope, I do not have a picture of it, none of them, but we do have a picture of scorpion. We do have scorpion in the lab. Uh, also, scorpions, ticks, um, uh, mites, daddy long legs, they all belong to this class. Uh, tigmata or cephalothorax and abdomen, uh, chelicerae, pedipalps, and four pairs of walking legs. I've talked about all of that. Uh, no antenna, you already know that. Claws and fangs, which are modified pedipalps and chelicerae. Uh, some have poison glands uh, or stingers. I think that's the next picture it will say it. Uh, first arthropods move to the land. These are the first arthropods that they move from sea 
to the land or uh, to conquer the land. Okay, so arthropods, uh, they are a master in the sea and also a master in the land. Here we go. Okay, so this is, these are chelicerae and some species that they have poison, these are called fangs right here. These fangs at the end of chelicerae can penetrate into their prey and transfer uh, poison. So right here, inside of the animal, there is a poison gland here, a poison gland here, and there is a duct here, there is a duct here, so they can transfer the poison into their uh, prey at the end of the uh, chelicerae. Here are the pedipalps, look like walking legs, you saw it in, uh, and they can bring food to the mouth, uh, that's what the function of um, a penny powder. And then of course, you know, chelicerae is for piercing, seizing, uh, tearing the, uh, the prey, uh, all of those. And of course, here they're showing you both compani and simple. Order Arania under class Arachnida, there is order Arania, which is spiders, uh, tarantula, they all belong to that uh, order. And all spiders are carnivores. Uh, spiders male always smaller than female. Uh, cephalothorax is called uh, prosoma, and abdomen is called opisthotoma. Uh, this is the reason because uh, they are separate. I, I know we, I said that they are not separated by septum, but these are because these segments, in, only in these animals, group of animals, they are segmented by a little bit of um, a septum, then they call it prosoma and opisthotoma. Why a mere, they call it opisotoma and prosoma uh, because of that little septum that exists between the cephalothorax and abdomen. Both unsegmented, that is why they are called, here we go, uh, they are called prosoma and opisotoma. Uh, Pedicel is where these two regions are connected together by that little septum that I was talking about. Chelicerae has fangs, have poison glands. Uh, you saw the pedipalps have poor working legs. I'm repeating myself. Okay. Mount Pekian tubules. Okay. Mount Pekian tubules, you will see them in, um, in uh, grasshopper. We do have model of grasshopper. You will see them in grasshopper. Mount Pekian tubules, uh, it's almost uh, acting like our rectum, uh, our uh, large intestine, sorry about that, our large intestine. And what happens, it reabsorbs water and minerals from the food that these animals eat, just like our uh, large intestine. One of the uh, function of large intestine to reabsorb water and, um, and minerals, vitamins, that's one of them. 90% uh, of uh, absorption in our body happens in the small intestine, the other 10% happens in large intestine. So what is being absorbed in large intestine, minerals, vitamins, and water, so water. Okay, uh, book lungs, trachea, or both, uh, sp uh, spiracles that opening to the outside. Uh, this is a structure you will see it in grasshopper better, but these animals have them. These are openings, uh, spiracles, these are openings that allow air into the animal. Uh, Coxal glands eliminate waste through the pores. Uh, Acilli, they're simple eye, eight simple eyes, lens, optic rods, and retina, they have. Poor vision, but they have sensory CK, uh, uh, sensing uh, vibration of its web. I talked about that, those CK on the surface of the animal, the hair looking uh, projections, uh, they can uh, detect the vibration of uh, CK. Set glands for web spining. Uh, not all spiders have web for trapping the prey. Here are an example of one of them. So, some of them. Uh, wolf spiders, jumping spiders, fish spiders. Uh, your textbook say they do not provide uh, any uh, web material. There are two types of venom, uh, neurotoxic and hemolytic. All of animal kingdom, every animal that we study so far, the uh, cube jellyfish or, or jellyfishes, any animal that we study that they have poison, uh, frogs, some frogs have poison, uh, scorpions, all of the venoms in animal kingdom is broken into two groups. Either they have neurotoxic uh, venom that it, it, it blocks the neurotransmitters of the animal, or hemolytic, it means they destroy the red blood cells. 
most of venom of all animal kingdoms is combination of the two. Okay, most venom is combination of the two. It's either blocking uh, neurotransmitters or uh, they are uh, destroying the red blood cells of their prey. Other scorpionaria, which scorpions are in there, common in tropical and subtropical. Scorpions, they hide. If you don't bother them, they don't bother you. It just when you bother them, then they come after you. Pigmata is uh, cephalothorax, uh, pre abdomen and post abdomen. Uh, post abdomen has five segments and stinging apparatus. Uh, over by Vepris, they lay eggs. I don't know, have you seen pictures of uh, scorpions? Then in the back, there are the small little teeny bitty scorpions. It's because after they lay eggs, uh, immediately they hatch and they go on the back of their mother and then, uh, of course, the mother takes care. Uh, and there, there are some viviparous ones, too, uh, in this group. I'm saying in this group. Not only, not, uh, not uh, necessarily scorpions, uh, but there are some. Order Akari, ticks and mites. We do have slide of them in the lab on the microscopic slides. Uh, live all over. Uh, they are complete fusion of cephalothorax and abdomen, as I talked about it. <coughs> Mouth parts are on capitulum. They have, you will see it on your slide, uh, the tick. Uh, they have a mouth part which is called capitulum. It's a cigar shape. Look like a cigar. Look at it on the microscope. And that mouth part is called uh, capitulum for uh, chelicerae, for piercing, theory. And uh, this is a specialized mouth part. Okay. Uh, chelicerae for piercing, tearing, and gripping food. Serious agricultural pests. Uh, usually, I'm referring to the mite. The mites are usually agricultural pests, and of course, ticks can destroy uh, livestock as well. Uh, these mites, I'm talking about um, the plants uh, and ticks, of course, they can be a uh, problem in livestock as well. Uh, most species have three hosts life cycle. Here is a scorpion picture. Um, the only thing that I'm worried about is the post abdomen and pre abdomen, and the rest uh, you can uh, you don't have to worry about it too much. Okay, larva, nymph, adult, the three host vector vector uh, of diseases: chiggers, uh, uh, trombicula, or red bugs. Chiggers that causes dermatitis. Uh, transmission of pathogens can happen by some of the chiggers. Uh, Demodex already talked about that. Demodex in um, it's uh, caused mange in some animals, and cigar shape uh, causes problems, no problems in human, in animals can cause death, dogs and cats.